Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be covering seven signs of skin cancer you don't wanna miss. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. I upload skincare content here on YouTube. If that sounds of interest to you, consider subscribing, or you could consider following me over on Instagram or TikTok. I'm pretty consistent posting on those platforms as well. Now, there are quite a few different types of skin cancer, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be going over seven signs of the most common type of skin cancer, which is basal cell carcinoma. Not only is basal cell carcinoma the most common type of skin cancer, it's actually the most common cancer diagnosed worldwide. In the US, it's estimated that 2 million Americans will be handed a diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma each year. Most people who get this type of skin cancer have a paler skin type and a history of a lot of unprotected sun exposure. However, any skin type, any skin tone can get this type of skin cancer. So while it's more common in paler skin types, if you have a deeper skin tone, this can affect you as well. It's mostly in sun exposed areas, but it also can occur in areas where you've had a prior injury or a burn. When you hear the word cancer, that sounds really, really scary, and it is, but in the case of basal cell carcinoma, rest assured, it's a very slow growing skin cancer, and it's not life threatening. If a left untreated, however, it can start to grow very deep into the skin and it can impact the nerves and the blood vessels that can infiltrate there. And as it gets deeper, it's more difficult to remove and the removal process leads to more noticeable scarring and can be quite disfiguring. So best treated early to prevent not only disfigurement, but also to reduce the risk of recurrence. Number one is a pink or red growth that kind of dips down in the center. This is often mistaken for either a sore or an acne scar. It has a red rim to it, but a little dip in the center. And that can be a sign of a basal cell carcinoma. If it doesn't go away, you might wanna get it checked out. If you don't recall having acne in that area and it's new, it's unlikely to be an acne scar. Number two is a growth or scaly patch on or around the ear. The ears are a frequent location for skin cancers, namely basal cell carcinoma, and can easily be mistaken for just a patch of dry skin or a sore. You keep putting moisturizer on it, that may temporarily make it feel softer, but it always kind of comes right back. Number three is a sore that does not heal. Maybe it even bleeds sometimes or oozes, or maybe it heals, but it always comes right back. This is sometimes mistaken as a pimple or a sore. It can bleed, ooze, and it can be uncomfortable, painful, itchy, have a little numbness and tingling sensation to it. A lot of times these might appear, for example, on your nose. And again, some people just think, oh, it's a pimple, but a pimple, even if you have the most stubborn acne, a given pimple should not last and persist. It should go away. Granted, you may get pimples elsewhere, but that's kind of a clue that, hey, this is more than just acne. It might be a skin cancer. Number four is a slightly raised patch of either dry or irritated skin anywhere on the face or on the body. And it can be brown, black, tan, red, or pink, any, you know, different colors. A lot of times this is just mistaken as a patch of irritated skin, kind of similar. You put on moisturizer and it just doesn't go away. Maybe you even try like a product that is meant to smooth the skin and exfoliant and it just patch just keeps coming back, this rough area of skin. That could be a clue to basal cell carcinoma. Number five is a round growth. It might be pink, red, tan, brown, black, maybe even a, a mixture of some colors. And it can be a little smooth or rough. Oftentimes this is mistaken as a mole 
or a wart. Um, you know, people will go in to the drugstore and buy over-the-counter wart treatments to try and get rid of it. It might actually be a skin cancer. This is tricky because warts, they tend to stay around for a long time. Eventually they go away, but they're pretty stubborn. And so if you've got something that you think is a wart, it, it, do know in the back of your mind, it could be a skin cancer, especially if it's happening on sun exposed skin. Number six is a scaly rough spot. Maybe it's brown or tan. I find this is often mistaken as a freckle or a age spa. As a matter of fact, some people will go as far to go to a med spa and have it treated with like intense pulse light in a med spa, thinking that it's just a sunspot, when in reality, it's actually a skin cancer. So if you have a new brown or tan spot that's kind of rough, doesn't go away, definitely have it examined by a board certified dermatologist. It could be a skin cancer cancer, not just some sunspot or age spot. And lastly, number seven is something that looks like a scar. It may be white, yellow, kind of bound down and feeling tight. It might appear shiny and smooth, but in your mind, you're like, I never had a cut there or any kind of injury. So why would I have a scar? could be a clue for a type of skin cancer called amorphia form basal cell carcinoma. There are a lot of different types of basal cell carcinoma as a side note. That's why they can look like pretty much anything on the skin, any kind of growth. You have to be mindful of a skin cancer. All right, so those are some clues that you might be dealing with a skin cancer, but I want you guys to understand there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of skin lesions that can pop up on your skin and they can be totally not cancer, not this at all. There are things like warts, skin tags, benign growths like seborrheic keratoses. And so it may not be that, but it's super important to have it evaluated. Where do basal cell carcinomas arise? Most often it's going to happen on areas of the body that see a lot of sun, especially the head and the ears. They can happen around your eyelids. That's why I'm always telling you guys and reminding you guys to put sunscreen around your eyes and wear your sunglasses because basal cell carcinoma can definitely impact the lid margin and removing it is more involved than if it happens elsewhere on the body. It can happen on a shoulder, on the trunk, like your chest or your back, especially the upper back where you often get a lot more sun exposure and on the lower legs. This is especially a common area for women. Maybe you did a lot of sunbathing in your younger years, didn't put sunscreen on your legs. God forbid you went in a tanning bed. I mean, these are common areas for this type of skin cancer to arise actually is on the shins. Are there any symptoms with the basal cell carcinoma? Well, in some cases it can be painful. And because these skin cancers, they slowly grow downward. Sometimes they can entrap little nerves throughout the skin and that can make the lesion, the, the bump or whatever feel itchy kind of tingly, pins and needles type sensation. And in some cases, blood vessels can grow into the basal cell carcinoma. That makes it more kind of what's called friable, ooze readily, bleed, weep. And that is why some people think they have a sore or a pimple, but it doesn't heal. That is a red flag that you might be dealing with a skin cancer, a skin lesion that bleeds, itches, oozes, and doesn't go away. Definitely something to get checked out and see a board certified dermatologist for evaluation. This type of skin cancer tends to arise in people, you know, around their fifties, older adults, but it's happening in younger and younger demographics. Women in their thirties can develop basal cell carcinoma. And especially if you have a history of using a tanning bed that puts you at greater risk for any type of skin cancer. So if you have a history of going in a tanning bed or getting a lot of blistering sunburns in your early childhood, pay careful attention to your skin. If you're a paler skin type, especially know in the back of your mind that it is a possibility that something that doesn't heal is a skin cancer. And rather than going to Dr. Google or on social media, 
try and see a board certified dermatologist to have it evaluated. Like I said, there are a lot of skin lesions that can pop up as we get into our wiser years, especially skin tags, warts, seborrheic keratoses, a ton of things that are not this type of cancer, but can look an awful lot like it. Therefore, it's best to see a board certified dermatologist who can properly evaluate it. And the, the thing about basal cell is sometimes it can be treated right away. Uh, you don't necessarily need very involved treatment depending on the size, the location, and a variety of other things. Sometimes simply the fact of biopsying it and removing it to evaluate it under the microscope is the treatment. All right, you guys, so those are seven signs of basal cell carcinoma. It's really common, and again, it's not just a skin cancer that impacts people of a paler skin type. If you are a deeper skin tone, this type of skin cancer certainly can impact you as well. So even though it's most common in areas with a lot of sun damage and in people who are prone to sunburn, anyone can get this, anyone can get this. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. And um, I have videos on other types of skin cancers, namely melanoma. So I'm gonna link that video in the description box and I'm gonna put it on the end slate if that is of interest to you. It is an older video, but it's still accurate. <laughs> so check that out. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.